another thing that I want to ask you as far as what do you look for in a web developer? So my students can learn from this experience because you are, you're actually a real, uh, you know, digital agency owner, right? Like, yeah. and this, another thing that I want to point out out there, you might see a lot of guys that pop up on the internet and be like, Hey guys, uh, this is how you start marketing. This is how you do digital agencies. This is that bro. They don't even have agencies. They've never had an agency. If you want to check out somebody that really has a, a real life agency, a real business that people go in there and, and, and go for the services and has a team, check out Ruan, man. So that's why I want to pick his brain. Like, what do you look for in a web developer? You know, when you're about number, to hire number, one. No, great question. Number one, experience with exist with projects. I mean, if you can come to the table and you say, look, here's a project that I've built and here's how it's relevant to your company's mission and your company's goals. I, I will hire that person over anybody that has a master's degree or MBA or anything along those lines. And the, re the reason for that is because those people have taken execution instead of just sitting around and learning for 10 years and not having anything to show for it. It's a lot more important that you execute. Our company, it's really built off of urgency and speed. So somebody that comes in, if I ever get a new hire that says, yeah, I'm applying for this web designer position that pays, uh, you know, 55,000 a year, let's say starting out. And here's three websites that I've built that look like yours before I even came to here, you're going to get the job immediately. And, uh, you know, that, that's the number one thing I look for is experience. That's why I think with what you're doing, Joe, with coding phase, um, you can really give people that ability. And I'm sure you have people that get jobs all the time because of what you've taught them and what they have you know, to showcase. But in reality, it's all about the projects that you've already done. Education literally means nothing. I, my, my lead web designer, Evan Bambera, he has absolutely no education, absolutely none. The kid went right out of high school, right into development arc, started building websites. And now he's in a position to where he's in leadership and he's kind of the one, you know, calling the shots and this kid's 20. And that type of maturity comes with his, his diligence, his, uh, his, his maturity to just say, look, I'm just going to start building and learning. And as I go, fuck it, I'm going to fail a bunch of times. I'm not going to build things that are perfect, but I know as I persist, and I learn more code and I learn more HTML and I learn more CSS and I learn more Java and I learn how to integrate these sites well with what our mission is. Develop Mark has a very clear mission. And if you can integrate that within a company's mission, you're gonna be successful. So somebody that wants to work at Salesforce, let's say, okay, we know that Salesforce is a customer relationship management tool. So if you're applying there, how can you use what you've learned from coding phase or from anywhere to help them build a better CRM? That's the number one thing I look for. Secondary to that is I really like local people. And the reason why I say that is because I think it's critical that we meet inside of the office, maybe like two or three times a week. And I, I don't know, I just feel like my relationship with local people is a lot better than my relationship with uh, freelance, you know, overseas, even though it's a lot cheaper. The reality is, is like when I can meet somebody in person, it just makes the work that we do a lot more efficient. Um, so I look for locality. So apply to a company that's very local. It's gonna make your it's gonna make the hiring process a lot easier if you can meet with them in person um, and show them the projects. This works too. But when I met you, Joe, the dynamic was way different than it is on this call. Um, mm -hmm. Just because we're, we're humans, we're communication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. So the number one thing for us is experience. You know, if you have the experience, if you can show us projects that directly align with our mission and our goals, and you can build a website like Painters in CT before you even come to the interview, or maybe have ideas, or maybe say, here's how I can help. Here's how you can better this. Here's how you can better that. Come with strategy. Don't just fucking come to the interview and expect to just get questions. No, lead the conversation. Be the leader and say, look, I found an issue on your websites. If you're going to an agency, your websites have this. I can put, make a piece of code that will make them better because of this. And it really comes with the education because you don't know what you don't know. So like if I took your course right now, Joe, and I did Shopify developer career bundle and I, and I, I worked for a Shopify agency and I was applying there and it was a high paying job, 70,000, you know, and I took something that I learned from there and said that in the interview, you're much more likely to get the job than if they just ask you questions and you're just being like a, a, a quiet weirdo. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's so important for developers to actually go in and, and, and it's like what I, I keep on repeating myself here on this channel. You know, I keep telling people like, yo, you need to start building projects that businesses gonna say, I can use this. This is something that I need or something that you're bringing value to them. Or like, let's say, for example, like you go in and you apply to an e-commerce company, right? But you've never done e-commerce. Like now they're just taking a risk. 
Now they're like, okay, this guy on paper, it looks like he has this skills, has this skill, but he has never done this. He don't know what's the process of the checkout page. He don't know the process of integrating with uh, third-party marketing APIs, uh, the Facebook uh, pixels, uh, Google Tag Manager. He don't understand none of these things that might be valuable. So now we got to sit down and train this person for a month or two months, right? And just getting up to speed. On paper, they can code, and a lot of people can code, right? That's something that you're gonna find. A lot of people can code, but are they valuable to that company? Are they gonna go in there and be an asset, or are they gonna be a liability for the next month or two? You know what I'm saying? Where you're like, damn, somebody gotta be over this guy's back, you know, the whole time is like babysit him, or can he just hit the ground running that same day? You know what I mean? Like, that's something that's super important for young developers. like. Do your due diligence, find out exactly like what is it that uh, a company do, go in there and like you say, take control of the interview. You know, every time that I've gone to interviews after my first two interviews, I, I failed my first two interviews. I went to Twitter, failed it, went to Tumblr, failed it, right? It was, I didn't even know what the hell I was doing. I was like surprised they even called me. So <laughs> I showed up there. I was like, okay, cool. I'm just grateful to be in this room this <laughs> everywhere. You know what I mean? I'm just grateful. You know what I mean? But once I got over that and I'm like, okay, cool. Now when I go to job interviews, it's like, I'm interviewing you. I'm going in there and giving you guys, you know, something that's going to be valuable for you because you have to make yourself, you know, somebody that when you go in there, they say, this guy has some expertise that we need. We can't let him go because no. if he goes with the same things that he's showing us right now, another company is going to get him. And that could be our competitor. We could bring this guy in, put him on the team, and he could hit the ground running on Monday when he comes in. You know, so that's super valuable, man. You know, thank you for sharing that, you know, because a lot of times we don't get the perspective of the owner, right? And the person that's actually hiring you, you know, so it's, it's really great, man. Um, let's talk about stacks, man. Uh, as far as like technology, I know you, you're probably not the super technical dude. I mean, I can't go in there and be like, are you using GraphQL? Are you using uh, JavaScript? What, what you guys use it like? Just give me what you guys use, what you know of, as far as uh, the development side, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty technical, but okay. I'm not, hey, look at I'm your not, you. I'm not that technical, but I, <laughs> he I'm said, "Hold on, Joe. Hold on. Hold Let me up. dab on you real quick." <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm like. Uh, you know, the, our, our staff, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of share my screen with you in a second here to kind of show you what we do and how we do it and what tools that we use and, and exactly how we track everything and, and, and more importantly, the tools that we use. I don't mind sharing the tools that we use. I already show them on my YouTube channel all the time. Uh, but it's actually a pretty cool process. And I think that a lot of people are going to get a lot of value from this video because it, it, it really like dumbs everything down for you. It really gets to show you, um, you know, this stuff doesn't have to be as complicated as you think it is. Um, and so the number one thing that we use is uh, we use a website builder, right? So our agency uses different website builders for different projects, but our number one website builder that we use is called Duda, D-U-D-A. And Duda is a very simple um, website builder. It's nothing really special about it. What is special about it to us is that it's scalable. So we can build a website, boom, like that. And, and because we have the systems and processes behind that, Whereas WordPress, there's a little more of a process that goes into it um, in terms of getting, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, better qualified uh, uh, um, de 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 developers. And what I mean by that is, if our entire team is trained on one content management system, it's going to be easier for us to bang out projects faster. If we're going back and forth with WordPress, we're using uh, Divi Builder, we're using Beaver Builder, we're using uh, what's the other one? Um, uh, um, Ele elemental, I think. Elemental. Or yeah. if we're using all of that, every different project is a different content management system. We're going to go crazy. And we, you can't scale that way. That's why I think Shopify, what you're doing is super scalable because you're working in one platform over, over, and over again. So now every developer that you bring on now can already know your playbook. You don't have to change your playbook every time you get a client. That's the number one reason agencies fail because they keep mm -hmm. trying to fucking do custom projects. Stop mm -hmm. doing custom projects. Build something that's repeatable. And mm -hmm. so um, with us, we use a website builder called Duda, D-U-D-A. 
Before that, we were using WordPress, very custom, very difficult to scale, couldn't hire employees, was very difficult to get projects in and out, took six months to build a website. Now we're down to like six weeks to build a really nice custom website. And so that's the number one thing. We're currently in progress of creating our own content management system. And the reason for that is because Duda, WordPress, um, Wix, Squarespace, all of these other content management systems, how many people are they trying to please? Everyone, right? They're yeah. trying to please all their clients. Our content management system is gonna please who? Just us. Just so us, we're gonna yeah. have our tools and systems built just for us. That's the value in knowing the technology portion of it as well as you know leading it. All right, let me know if you could see my screen. Yep, I see it. Okay, so this is an example of a website that we have extremely satisfied client. I'm, when I, and when I say extreme, I mean like they will go above and be make sure that the world knows what we've done for them. And this is the review that they've less, left us. And you know, this is a client that's been with us for about um, probably like 12 months now. Um, but you know, this is the, the type of results that we get for this client. It's, it's mm -hmm. gigantic. Like we didn't push them to write this. This is their business. It's called CT moving and storage. So what we do is, is when somebody types in, um, let's say, see, you know, whatever the town is, we have a Google ad that shows up for their name. So we set up Google ads, mm -hmm. we have the local listings and we have their organic result, right? So they're showing yeah. up three times when somebody searches that. When you look on the phone, it's the entire fucking screen, right? <laughs> How do you like not choose the that? only guy? That's it. <laughs> yeah, right. And there's, there's a lot no more other companies. It's like, that's it. CT moving company. That's it. And there's, there's that's only, it. they're the only ones there. And so our team built this entire website, right? So every piece of this website we created and we used Duda website builder to do it. Keep in mind guys, the, the website builder can be done on uh, WordPress. This site can be done on anything. It's just our preference. We've gotten really good at it. We're certified, we're an enterprise customer. It is what it is. People build beautiful sites on Wix. Just wanna show you the technology we use. Yeah, no, um, and not for nothing uh, from the videos that I've seen on your, uh, on your website, I remember I asked you, what is it that you guys use? Because like the back end of it is very easy to use. Basic, simple. It's, it's simple and I'm like, damn, this looks good. Like I could definitely use this, you know, and I'm pretty sure like just that whole back end, like you could go ahead and, and customize this however you want. And then now you have that admin section that you guys can go in and say, you know what? I could pass this to the copywriter. They could go in there, do things themselves, change things on their own. So the developers no longer uh, bound to saying, hey, okay, he has to do everything. Like once he does the layout, he does the design, puts everything up there. Like that's it. His job is done unless we need to add any extra functionalities. But anybody else on the team can go in there and change things around. So yeah, there are cons with it. You mm -hmm. can't access the um, HT access file. You can't access mm -hmm. yeah. those back end. You can't play with the, um, you can't play with the, um, uh, what's it called? The starts with a P it's a programming language mm -hmm. uh, you can't play with a lot of the code but you mm -hmm. can do a lot of the front end stuff so and the other thing is they're not responsive so it's not responsive which a lot of people don't like but for us who, the client doesn't care yeah you definitely can't build something like you have Joe like you, you you definitely can't build something you know I mean you can but it's gonna be a lot more difficult to build something this intense on it um, so it's really built for like custom basic websites. It's not anything for a crazy advanced sites because the, mm -hmm. the customization of it on an HTML and code basis can get a little difficult. You can program your own widgets, which is extremely helpful because we can mm -hmm. bang things out really quickly, right? Yeah. So back to what I was talking about. Somebody clicks, they go to our website. Now we have them on our website. The website is built for conversions. There's buttons everywhere. So, you know, we have a, we have a, we have a chat. We have get moving estimate. We have buttons everywhere. Super clickable. Everything is very clickable. Everything is very noticeable, right? It's big, colorful. That's the branding aspect of what we use. Mm -hmm. um, so then what we do is every time somebody goes to get a free estimate, they get redirected to a tool that we use. It's called Typeform. You've probably heard of Typeform. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, amazing tool. I recommend everyone to use it for survey collection or data collection in general. And what happens is the cool thing about Typeform is you can also put it into an iframe. So it'll actually load inside of the site as well. Mm -hmm. um, but basically we'll have people go to the website from ads or in SEO and fill out this information. Mm -hmm. Now, every time somebody calls the, the, the phone line on that phone, on that website, 
we use a tool called CallRail that's white labeled, so customers think it's our tool. And CallRail allows us to track the calls down to the source that it came from as well. So yeah. we know every single call that's coming from this website. And why would we want to know that? Well, we want to know what sources are working the best. If I, if I control find Google Ads, I can see that is Google Ads providing them an ROI? Yeah, it is. There's a lot of calls coming in from Google Ads. Mm -hmm. And if I type in direct, that's how I know those calls technically weren't from Developmark. Those calls were from people that were searching their brand. Mm -hmm. Critical to know. Because when you're working with clients like we are, that's in the 5 million, 10 million, 50 million mark, there's a lot of people searching them directly. So that's technically not our lead, if that makes sense. But mm -hmm. we still track it. And then every time somebody fills out or every time they get a call, the customer gets an email that looks like this and it has a Developmark logo on it. So now you're talking about this, 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 this business is paying an agency $5,000 a month, but every day they're seeing 10 of these come through. So they're happy. They know leads mm -hmm. are coming in. Every time that type form gets filled out, they get an email that looks like this. And it's basically just that entire type form filled out, new lead that comes in. Every time the chat gets filled out, the chat goes in and gets the lead, reports it back to the client, and the chat's completely automated. And we use a tool called Virtual Spirits for that. Um, it uses an, uh, artificial intelligence and you can program it to basically talk to the person. The cost yeah. on this chat is actually really affordable too. It's about $200 a year or competing chats are like 150, 200 a month. Yeah, so it's, yeah, definitely, yeah. it's definitely worth it to get an automated chat if the customer's on a budget. Um, mm -hmm. And you can even put your little brand uh, down below on the chat as well, Demo develop marketing virtual spirits. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of cool. Um, but that's one way that we that we use this our basic technology to get our clients results. We set up the website, we set up the Google ads, we set up the tracking. And then from there, after the website's built, it's automated. So that $5,000 yeah. a month that comes in, we're not doing a lot of work. Our, our PPC person is going in and editing the PPC once a day. They're mm -hmm. not, we're not creating new websites. We're, some clients we are where they're a little yeah. more advanced. Yeah. We're not doing all this custom shit all the time. Mm -hmm. We may do the heavy lifting the first six weeks. After we do that heavy lifting in the first six weeks, we have ads that are running, it's tracking, and they're getting results. Client does not complain. We don't hear from them. We're the ones that communicate with them. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, it'll be a design change that we have to do that's custom, or they'll want to add something to the website, and they have unlimited in, that, in the contract.